So there's one thing I hear all the time when I'm uh, archiving data in the Info Archive, and that's ETL is hard. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. But the process has been around for a long time, and I'm here to show you that ETL can be quite easy, and the tools are free and widely available. I'll use this time to demonstrate that. So the first step in ETL is, of course, E or extract data from your data source. And in this case, I've chosen a data source, a public data source from uh, the usmint.gov website. And it's about uh, the mintages of coin releases, which interests me because I'm a numismatist. And we'll be using WGET, which is a utility that's about 20 years old. And it can take data from a public web server over HTTP and save it to a local file. So using WGET, I grab the data from the URL that I get off the website. You see it tells me it's... Excel, the file name will be download sales report.cfm, just like in the URL. But let me show you where I found it on the public website. See, I copied the link here. And if I was to download it through the browser, it just looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Now, let me go into the archive and show you that I have no data in the holding for coins currently so that in this demonstration I can show you how I've loaded some data into it so you can see zero records right now. So now that I've done my extract operation, let's take a look at this file so that we know what to do to it. Let's page through it. You can see it looks like HTML, but it's got the useful data in there with a whole bunch of HTML tags for formatting around it. So the mintage and the date are there like I want. But it looks like I have some HTML to strip. So we'll be doing the transform operations with four tools, sed or stream editor, tr or translate, paste, and awk. And uh, I'll use different snippets that I uh, wrote myself or downloaded from the web. This one strips HTML. And you can see it does a good job of that, but it leaves a lot of blank lines in its output. So I'll need to add a few more statements and now it it looks more like I want you see I just put in more translate and said statements but let's look at the tail of it and see how many records I got well I've got 151,000 rows that's about 30,000 records because of each record seems to be five rows long so now we'll be uh, using the paste command with a comma delimiter and five columns that will be converted to essentially CSV format. I'm going to count the number of records now that I've done the CSV conversion and you can see that we've got 30,211 records. One of those, if you look at the head, you'll see that one of those is just the column names, so we'll exclude that record. And then we have 3,210 <laughs> records that we expect to show in the archive. So we've got pretty good CSV formatting, but what we really want is XML. So we'll need to use an aux script for that. So I pasted an aux script on the end of it that I found on the web. It's about 20 lines. And let's page through that. And you can see the output uh, looks pretty good. It has a coin issue for every record. And uh, the, uh, the elements look well formed. So it's time now to export that output to a file rather than the screen and then we'll finally get to the load operation. So I'm creating a file now called usmintdata.xml
And now we get to the last operation, the load operation. And we'll be loading into InfoArchive using a command line tool for loading XML into the XML database called run direct import.sh. This is a standard tool provided with XDB. And it places it in the holding I defined and validates that it's well-formed XML. So it looks like we've successfully loaded into the archive, but let's check. Let's go into the holding and do a search for all records. And sure enough, we have 30,210 records sorted by mintage values. And if I wanted to, I could go to the end of that list and I could see the highest vintage release is the silver proof dollar from 2014. So that's an ETL operation live for your enjoyment. Thank you for your time. Uh, note this is a uh, new Linux, uh, Red Hat or CentOS flavor. Uh, you could run the same commands on other systems like the Mac OS or on Windows using SigWin. All this was done from my Mac over a terminal session. Thanks for your time and attention.